Good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to talk about one of the most important health problems of the women during the postpartum period. During the uh, next few minutes, we are going to talk about nursing care of the patient with puberal disorders, namely postpartum uh, blues, postpartum depression, and postpartum psychosis. Uh, according to the evidence, utility of this uh, disease condition basically unknown, but there are several theories related to uh, risk factors or etiology of this disease condition. It is believed that this uh, etiology is multifactorial. That means there are a large number of factors involved, such as stresses, especially responsibility of uh, caring or rearing child, a sudden increase in endocrines of labor, uh, for example, estrogen or progesterone hormone changes during the labor, and also the free serum uh, tryptophan, that is one uh, believe that uh, this uh, chemical also interfere with this disease condition. In addition, postpartum thyroid dysfunctions of the women also can uh, influence as a risk factor. Uh, if you take uh, this problem, basically we can identify three areas, postpartum blues, postpartum depression, and also postpartum psychosis. Shall we talk about generally what, is, what are the risk factors? Uh, if I identify like this, undesired pregnancy, there are women, they have no any expectation, but unexpectedly they get pregnant. That is one situation, risk factor. Feeling uh, unloved by the mate, if the person feel that partner or a boyfriend or a mate is not loving, that, that is also one reason for changes of this person's psychology. Uh, and also, people with uh, people less than 20 years, that means teenagers who get pregnant, as some risk factors for de developing this kind of disease. And also, un unmarried uh, female, are, uh, that is one risk factor. Medical in indigestion, that means person has no any uh, economical uh, strength to maintain medical problems. That is one reason. In addition, self, uh, low self-esteem of the person, dissatisfaction with the extent of the education. Person feel that he has or she has no uh, enough education according to her perception. That is one reason. Economic problems of the women. Uh, poor relationship with the husband or boyfriend. There are situations uh, during the pregnancy or before pregnancy. There are different uh, person, interpersonal conflict between partner that can lead to this kind of uh, disease problem. Being a part of the family with six or more siblings in the same family, including uh, people who have large number of uh, siblings in the same family, that indicate that person has low economic uh, condition with that large number of children. And also, limited parental support. There are situations, uh, the females uh, who are uh, going against their parents, sometimes they are getting married or have partners against the parents, that, that kind of situation where they are getting low parental support that can lead to uh, this kind of disease condition. Uh, past to present evidence of emotional problems, people who experience emotional problems during, uh, during recent past, that can lead to this kind of disease. All these risk factors are uh, directly involved in this kind of disease condition. According to the research evidence, 50 to 70 percent develop this postpartum blues, mild level of postpartum problem. And also, 10 to 15 percent of new mothers develop postpartum depression. That is the uh, considerable amount that uh, increase, and there is a high risk of uh, suicide even. And also, very rarely, uh, about 1 percent, 1 to 2 percent, uh, women with this uh, problem develop postpartum psychosis. Uh, according to the history of depression, 30 percent chance of developing postpartum depression. That indicate that those who have postpartum uh, history of depression in their life, 
30 percent of them have chance of uh, developing postpartum depression. History of postpartum de uh, depression and also postpartum psychosis, if, you, if the person has that both condition, one of these, again, uh, uh, recurrence of this uh, problem has 50 percent chance. If you talk about uh, the postpartum blues, that is the mild level, uh, postpartum blues is the most common postpartum mood disturb disturbance. With prevalence estimated, as I mentioned previously, ra ranging from 50 to 75 percent. Postpartum blues are transient. That means during that transient period from uh, normal female to uh, the motherhood, that during that uh, period, the person developed this thing. Mild, this is mild form and also time limited. Within short period, that uh, symptoms disappear. Uh, and also do not require treatment other than reassurance. There is a big responsibility of the carers or the nursing people, the supporters, to give the correct reassurance because person have less experience. Therefore, they have, uh, they, they can overcome this problem. When you come to postpartum blues uh, again, uh, there are some identified signs and symptoms. Sadness, you can observe person uh, demonstrate sadness and also sometimes crying, demonstrate anxiety, irritation, and so restlessness. Uh, mood liability, always you can see uh, uh, if you look at the face. Liability means uh, your lips uh, outwards, like uh, you are cried, uh, nearly crying like situation. And also headache, they complain headache, and also sometimes confused. Forgetfulness is very common, and also insomnia, that's one complaint of the person with postpartum blues. Uh, uh, it is also called maternal blues sometimes, Tear, tearfulness, anxiety, irritability, all these things uh, within uh, that uh, mood in the first gen post delivery uh, period. Uh, begin with three to four days after birth and also peak on the fifth. That means we can expect the persons to have post, uh, postpartum blues the fifth day of the thing. That is a peak level. Uh, and also, this problem resolve in about uh, two weeks' time. That means, as I mentioned previously, no need to have more treatment, but you have to provide empathy and support. That is, those are the most important things, because uh, empathy is one of the most important approach for this kind of people with postpartum blues. And also, they should feel support from other uh, caregivers and also the family members and everybody. Importance for uh, her, the person to take time for herself. That means she needs some relaxation, rest time, and also caring and support. Therefore, postpartum blue is not a big uh, issue for the healthcare staff. Only they can provide uh, support and empathy. That's more than enough to overcome this problem. If you come to this postpartum depression, that is a little uh, problematic situation, any depressive episode that occurs within the first year postpartum, it is called postpartum depression. That doesn't mean within a short period after delivery, but it runs around one year, that within that first year, if the person develops uh, depression, we can call it as postpartum depression. And also, depressive disorders with uh, onset within the first four weeks postpartum, uh, we call uh, postpartum uh, depressive disorders, the strongest predictors of postpartum depression. Previously, I mentioned that. Antenatal depression and anxiety. And also, personal fam uh, family history, that is very strongly uh, contributing factor, and also life stresses and lack of social support. Right. Uh, these are the, the signs and symptoms of uh, postpartum depression. Insomnia, common problem lethargy, feelings, and also loss of libido. Libido means uh, loss of uh, sexual interest. Why we are talking about this problem? Normally, we talk about postpartum de uh, depression within one year period, not very soon after the delivery, but it takes time. That means if the person develops postpartum de uh, depression after 11 months of the postpartum period, uh, that also the person demonstrate that loss of libido. Pessimism or pessimistic ideas. Pessimism means negative feelings about 
person. A uh, person's feelings, some negative feelings all the time regarding most of the things that are day-to-day life. Incapacity for familial love, the normally the person cannot uh, share or provide love for the others or the children or any other partner or any other family members. It is uh, difficult to uh, give this uh, love for other people that indicate that person has some uh, problem or indication of postpartum depression. Uh, feelings of inadequacy, the person feels that she cannot do anything because she is not uh, capable enough to do things that a personal feeling always limit the person's activities of daily living. Ambivalence or negative feelings towards the infant, that is the area we have to more focus on. Why? If you feel that negative feelings toward the person, uh, child, infant, that indicate that person is not going to feed uh, correctly and also care correctly, that means at that situation, uh, this child needs somebody else's support. Otherwise, mother is not going to care the child. Uh, the, that is one of the nursing responsibility you have to think about. If the person demonstrates that ambivalence or negative feelings towards the child, that is the responsibility of the nurse to look after the child with all the required basic needs. Uh, and also, this person has inability to cope. That is one of the major area. That means coping skills are not there or uh, demonstrate that person has no any capability of coping stressors. Uh, when you come to, again, uh, the postpartum depression risk factors, Generally, we talk about postpartum uh, uh, disorders. Uh, specifically, when you talk about risk factors, most commonly observed are previous depressive illnesses and also lack of social support. And negative life events in the preceding pregnancy, there may be different events during the, before the pregnancy or during, uh, before the uh, delivery. That kind of uh, things can contribute to uh, postpartum depression. Negative attitude towards the pregnancy. Sometimes, person, as I mentioned previously, person had no any preparation to be pregnant, but uh, unfortunately, she got pregnant, and now attitudes towards the pregnancy is different. Unbalanced, uh, unplanned, and oh, first pregnancy. That is so. So, person is uh, very sensitive for the first first pregnant, uh, pregnancy because person has no previous experience. There is some kind of fear and also anxiety that can lead to this uh, problem. Physical discomfort, uh, there are some uh, health problems associated with pregnancy, uh, especially during the first trimester, or the nausea, vomiting conditions. All these problems or the experience give some negative feelings to the person. That can also lead to uh, some kind of, uh, as a contributing factor for postpartum depression. Previous stillbirth, person had bad experience during the past. She had a stillbirth or death of the infant during the past. That bad experience can contribute this time also feeling of uh, negative feelings towards the present child, even then that person can lead to postpartum depression. Uh, poor parental care, poor marriage dynamics, and also pre-marriage. That's one area we have to focus on. Maybe due to various reasons, a person, uh, person got uh, remarriage, and uh, this time, person has some negative feelings regarding the previous experience, then that can contribute to postpartum depression. Uh, there are some uh, women, though, those who are using uh, substance abuse, uh, not in our culture, but there are some cultures that women also use substance. Uh, substance dependency or substance use. Uh, that is one indicator for postpartum depression. Refer, uh, we have some responsibility when you are working, especially at uh, maternal care uh, area in the hospital. If you find a patient uh, with comorbid drug abuse, that means uh, the person must have a previous history of drug abuse and also the person is con continuing drug abuse. Fortunately, in our culture, we cannot find that kind of women, but in some cultures, we can find it. Uh, lack of interest in the infant. If you observe as a nurse, the mother is not uh, caring properly, 
uh, and uh, concern about the child, that is one indicator. Ex excessive concern for the child's health. There are mothers very concerned, over concerned sometimes, uh, think about the uh, child uh, condition, child's health. That is also one indication for uh, postpartum depression. Inability to cough, uh, as I mentioned, it. loneliness, person feel loneliness and also demonstrate loneliness uh, and feeling of incompetence of self that I mentioned repeatedly, feeling of incompetence for the person after delivering the child, that indication of uh, postpartum depression. Suicidal or homicidal thoughts, ideas, uh, that those are very serious indicators to take into consideration. Uh, sometimes person with uh, postpartum depression, even they can experience hallucination or psychotic behavior, abnormal odd behavior, overall impairment of functions. If you identify a woman who has recently delivered uh, with this kind of things, uh, we can discuss with the healthcare team and refer the person to a uh, psychiatrist. That is one of the responsibilities of the healthcare team. Untreated postpartum depression cause serious problems, impaired maternal infant interaction that can lead to serious problems of the personal and uh, personal development of the child, uh, personal mean, uh, personality development uh, that can lead to per personality issues of the child later stage of life. Negative perception about the infant behavior that also can lead to some uh, neglecting care of the child, attachment insecurity. That means that is the danger because there is, if the child has no security regarding the mother's attachment, the, that can affect the child in different ways. We have to consider all these things. This is the most uh, important uh, of serious problems in postpartum period, postpartum psychosis. The prevalence of very rare, 1 to 2 percent, uh, 0.1 to 0.2 percent, but still a problem is uh, dangerous or serious. Uh, Rare psychotic disorder. Uh, this is uh, this is considered a psychiatric emergency. That means you need to have emergency treatment for that uh, person. If you identify postpartum psychosis, it's required. Uh, the person inpatient hospitalization. That means person need to be admitted to the hospital and psychiatric unit and provide treatment. As you as you have all learn about uh, psychotic features, uh, the mainly we can identify symptoms like delusions, hallucinations, sleep disturbances, obsessive thoughts about the baby and also rapid mood swings or mood changes. Uh, extreme anxiety is another problem and also they get agitated or uh, become violent sometimes. Not only that, suicidal and homicidal thoughts, uh, there are high risks of, uh, risks of uh, suicidal behavior or suicidal thoughts and also suicidal attempt. Not only that, homicidal thoughts that can lead to destroy the child even. Therefore, we need to have very vigilant observation about the women. What are the management strategies available for postpartum psychosis? Mainly, you need to have uh, hospitalized patient, need to hospitalize the patient and also most commonly used antipsychotics given for the patient. Very effective treatment is one of uh, the most effective treatment is ECT, electroconvulsive therapy in Sri Lanka, but uh, ECT is banned in some countries. Otherwise, they can manage the uh, person with antipsychotic drugs. And also, supportive care, very essential all the time, any kind of postpartum uh, problem. If you talk about uh, nursing diagnosis, we are normally following the nursing care according to the nursing process. Nursing diagnosis, making nursing diagnosis very important. You know what are the symptoms and signs and the patient's behavior. Now you can easily make nursing diagnosis for the person. As we learned previously, we know that postpartum blue, that is uh, area we don't need any preparation or nursing care. Only things we can provide uh, empathy and support. But when you come to uh, postpartum depression, we have learned how to make the uh, nursing diagnosis for patient with depression. Similarly, you can apply same nursing diagnosis such as 
example like uh, social isolation, uh, self-directed violence related to the disease process, uh, hopelessness, uh, helplessness, that kind of feelings, severe anxiety, all these things are uh, major uh, psych, uh, nursing diagnosis. When you come to postpartum psychosis, uh, you can again, you have learned how to make nursing diagnosis for a patient with schizophrenia. Similar diagnosis you can make for the patient with uh, postpartum psychosis. Simple example, altered thought process related to disease process or altered perception if the person has hallucination. Uh, Self-destructive behavior you can make as a diagnosis as uh, fix for self-directed violence or uh, risk for self, uh, violence directed to others sometimes, uh, especially with the depression and uh, uh, postpartum psychosis, person has no good uh, intention to have meals. Therefore, there can be nutritional deviations. Therefore, we can make a nursing diagnosis as uh, altered nutrition, less than body requirement. That is, that indicate that nurse has to prepare or plan for the patient, uh, supply the nutrition for the patient in addition to uh, other requirement. Uh, mainly our responsibility from priority, we are giving the priority for infant safety first, that is most important. Because person may have homicidal ideas, or negative feelings towards the child that indicate that you need to focus on infant safety first. Second thing is the person may have suicidal ideas that mean mother's safety next. Thereafter, you should accept person as a person because uh, this is one of the basic nursing, psychiatric nursing principle, acceptance. Basic needs of the infants and mother, those are the area or responsibility for nurse. In addition, monitor responses to the treatment, very important, because there are situations, whatever the drugs or the antipsychotic treatment given, there are no responses. You need to monitor the responses for the disease condition after giving the treatment. Previously mentioned, empathy and support, that is consistently you need to give the empathy and support. In addition, develop confidence of mothers, because less experienced, unprepared mother always at risk, Therefore, you have to develop good confidence within the person that indicate that you can improve the person, grow the person according to the required level of skills. Teach the care of the newborn. That is also most important area. Nurse can uh, teach the person when gradually according to the person's capabilities increase, you can teach how to care the newborn. Those are important nursing responsibilities. And also, very importantly, the take the uh, uh, take this part, partner in planning care, because you must have seen in psychiatric uh, unit uh, in uh, National Institute of Mental Health, there is a separate section for uh, patient with puberal disorders. Uh, you can uh, get the support of the partner to uh, plan the care. Not only that, you can get the person support in uh, caring and also you can keep the person in the hospital with the permission to support the uh, support his partner. That is very important area uh, in uh, nursing care of the patient with puberal psychosis and depression. Other thing is all the time, nurse should vigilantly observe the behavior of the mother all the time. That is a round the clock observation because anytime this mother can change, these changes can lead to destruction of the baby or uh, self-harm to the mother uh, other than other, all the problems. Uh, so finally, uh, postpartum blues, you don't need any treatment, only the support and empathy. And also postpartum depression, psychosis, you need to hospitalize the person. Uh, basically, we can provide for patient with, anti uh, patient with depression antidepressant uh, medication, and psychotic for the patient with uh, postpartum psychosis. Uh, there are situations uh, the patients are given anti-anxiety drugs, uh, especially if the person has suicidal ideation, uh, 
uh, electroconvulsion therapy is one of the effective treatment in this care. Uh, psychotherapy and psychological counseling also important for a person to uh, manage this. There are some statistics given here. Uh, the prevalence of uh, postpartum blues, so postpartum psychosis, and also postpartum depression. Uh, those are uh, based on the evidence. Uh, you can see all these things. If you have any question related to postpartum uh, problem, you can ask now. Right. Uh, today we discuss about postpartum problems, uh, namely postpartum blues, postpartum depression, and also postpartum psychosis. Uh, we talk about postpartum blues are uh, common problems, and you don't need much treatment, but you need only the support and empathy. But as I mentioned, postpartum depression and postpartum psychosis, you need to have some kind of treatment, psychological care and also treatment. Especially I mentioned that uh, postpartum psychosis, you need to have hospitalized care. If the person has postpartum depression, you need to have antidepressant treatment. If the person has postpartum psychosis, the person needs antipsychotic treatment. In addition, especially if the person has suicidal ideation, uh, there is effective treatment in electroconvulsive therapy. In addition, we can provide, if uh, available, the psychotherapy, psychological counseling. This is how we have to manage the patient with uh, postpartum disorders. Uh, there are some evidence uh, in research. You can see uh, how this problem is prevailing in the world and also uh, the recurrence and uh, how to care for the patient. This evidence you can read further. Uh, if you have any questions from the today's session, you can ask now. Uh, if you don't have any questions, uh, we can talk. If you have any uh, question, you can bring next time. We are going to discuss the next uh, session uh, tomorrow, and you can bring your question. Thank you very much.